so dear friends uh, good morning to the uh, book reading club uh, as discussed we are always doing the recording with uh, with your consent so now as well uh, i have started the recording so over to ata to present your uh, chapter 5 yeah thanks thanks uh, abdul thanks for the opportunity and yeah we are on, on the third week of our book reading on lean unix and i'm going to present today the chapter 5 so just uh, going ahead what yeah uh, i want to give an overview about how the author has organized this uh, book so basically uh, Jeff divided the entire book in four sections, okay, on the four parts, basically. So the first part uh, deal with the introduction and principles of a uh, lean Unix, where uh, the discussion about the what are the principles uh, which is driving the lean Unix, uh, like uh, different uh, concepts, assumptions, uh, uh, hypotheses, personas, and all those things have been discussed. And in the second part, uh, it is about how to implement the Lean UX on the ground, means what are the tools or how we are going to implement that Lean UX process, uh, basically in our organization. So for that means uh, almost, uh, you can say that nine chapters are uh, spared there and each chapter is discussing one of the process or the tasks which we are going to use when we are working on the lean Unix, you based upon all the principles which has been discussed in the first part. And then in the third part, uh, author is discussing about how we are going to collaborate, means the uh, design collaboration and how it is going to be collaborate with uh, Agile, that lean Unix and Agile collaboration. And uh, in the last segment, uh, it has been discussed how that lean Unix would be use in the organizations what kind of mindset shift required to uh, use lean U ux in one's organization so basically this is the four uh, domains or the part the book is divided so we have already covered the first part uh, and from today i think we are going to start on the uh, second part of the book which deals about the process so for today's agenda uh, I'm going to discuss on overview of uh, Lean UX Canvas. Uh, basically, uh, it is a tool which uh, uh, is been designed for using the Linux process uh, when we are implementing any projects or any initiatives. So how we are going to use that uh, different principles in practice that is being covered in this uh, Linux UX Canvas. And uh, basically the fifth chapter, which would be discussing on the business problem means it is going to be the part of the first step uh, in the Linux uh, US canvas uh, where we would be discussing how the problem is going to be framed. What are the uh, key criteria we would be using to frame our business problem? So uh, giving an overview on the Linux, uh, sorry, uh, Lean UX canvas. So basically uh, it is kind of a, a framework or a tool which has been used to orchestrate Linux, uh, Lean UX processes. Uh, in a sing, uh, it is basically a single page which is which is having uh, all the process sections divided into eight groups or uh, author is calling them boxes, eight boxes. And it is starting from problem framing, designing, prototyping, and what are the research we are going to do. So this has been uh, discussed in this uh, Lean UX Canvas. Basically, uh, why we need this uh, Lean UX Canvas? So it is a very good uh, way to explain the process. Okay, what are the process which we are going to implement on the ground? So uh, how we are going to actually use uh, in the different uh, sections or uh, for the different principles, so it is very easily explained uh, in the canvas. And again, uh, it is used to capture our test assumptions or what are the uh, experiments or MVPs we are going to uh, discuss while designing uh, with Lean UX. And again, uh, it is a way to facilitate conversation uh, within the team with stakeholders, clients, and everyone. So it is kind of a way of collaborating between the teams and within and outside the team and 
again it is kind of building a shared understanding basically in lean ux we are discussing about uh, developing a shared understanding within the team to solve the problem so uh, this canvas would be a great tool to uh, solve the business problem implementing the entire uh, lean ux processes and the principles so uh, this is the canvas where uh, we can see that uh, there are eight boxes or eight uh, sections are there. The first one talks about the business problem. So what business problem we are going to uh, solve. So that is being discussed here. And in this box, uh, author talks about how we are going to uh, create that business statement. Okay. Uh, we will see in the uh, uh, in maybe momentarily in the presentation is how and what are the aspects we are saying while we are designing or preparing the business statement? Then uh, the second box about uh, business outcomes and third about what types of users and the customers we are going to address. And the fifth, uh, fourth is about the benefits or the goals which we have set for a designing purpose and what are the solutions of we are going to implement to achieve this. And then what we have uh, hypothesis means what are the assumptions we had done and what other things we are going to learn first and we are going to uh, prioritize them and uh, what other experiments we are going to do or what would be the MVPs that has been discussed in the eight box. So basically uh, this uh, canvas is like uh, uh, divided into two part again uh, where uh, the author says that means the uh, first thing uh, would be discussing the problem. So where we are now means what problem we are facing, where we are standing today and how we are going to reach to our goals that uh, author is explained in a way means uh, how we will get there and what would be our latter stage. So if we talk about the boxes which are representing this, so the first uh, one and three box would be representing now where we are standing. And box two and four would be representing the goals which we are going to achieve. That is our latter stage. And the uh, fifth box, which is about the solution, it would be discussing how we will get there to achieve our goals. And this box six, seven, eight would be defining how we will be finding our solutions or our assumptions to reach to our goals. So this is how that canvas is again uh, divided into the two sections. And in the next part, uh, author uh, discuss about the few of the questions regarding this canvas means uh, these are very important questions which uh, author addressed here. So the first is means uh, when we should use this uh, lean UX canvas. So basically this is to be used when we are starting our project means it is the kickoff meeting of our uh, new initiatives or the project. So there we are using this uh, uh, canvas to design our flow or our uh, strategies uh, to achieve our goals. And then uh, whether this canvas is uh, well suited for the early stage of ideas or for the new projects, or it is being used for uh, sustaining innovation. So he says that it is for both types of work, means we can use this canvas <coughs> for uh, new projects as well as for the innovations or the innovative uh, sustaining works which we are doing and basically it is uh, an important tool when we are uh, facing challenges like we are uh, dealing with the complex problems or we are not certain about a solution what we are looking for so there this canvas helps us a lot and again uh, how much time we should spend on this canvas means uh, uh, when we are using this canvas so basically this is going to be a uh, starting the projects or initiating the project or kick of meetings regarding any project. So basically the author says that uh, when we are uh, initiating any project, so there we spend uh, several hours to discuss about the problems, the solutions, and uh, what are the things we are going to achieve with this. So there uh, we need to understand the timelines means uh, based upon the project, how big the project is and how we are going to deal with the project. So based upon that, we can spend the time 
on uh, canvas there if the project is very large and we need to have several meetings so then we can have a divided this uh, work in a different uh, occasions and then if the project is very small so uh, we would be spending very uh, less amount of time over here so he says that when we are uh, experienced on the canvas so then we would be able to understand how much time we can spend here uh, and it would base all based upon the experience and the learnings. So again, uh, in the next question means uh, where the author talks about, is it necessary to use Lean UX Canvas? So he says that means it's not mandatory to use the canvas, but it is a flexible tool to uh, implement our design process or the flow. And then uh, here we can use uh, any box or uh, we can go through any process at any time, uh, which can be used uh, at any stage of the project. Um, I mean, we can use this canvas for developing the business statement, or we can also go directly and use this canvas to develop the hypothesis, or we can use it for uh, implementing the MVPs and all those things. And in the next section, uh, author discuss about how we are going to facilitate this uh, canvas process uh, in the teams so that we can have an inclusive involvement of everyone and collaboration between the team. So here, uh, author come with a pattern, which he says that it's one, two, four, all patterns. So there, whenever we are starting this canvas, so if we are selecting a one box, suppose uh, we are in the business uh, problem statement box. So there, first we should give a problem statement to an individual and let him come with his ideas and then give it to uh, two members from the group or the subgroup and let them discuss on their ideas. And then uh, with a, a larger group or the subgroups where there could be four or more than four uh, team members, discussing that idea or brainstorming on that. And then at end to a larger audience where everyone is involved. So using this approach, uh, we can use this, uh, every uh, process or the principles implementation with this canvas. So now going to the fifth chapter where we are going to discuss about the first box, which is a business problem. Basically, in the Lean UX, we are saying that we should give problems to the team to solve, not the solutions or the features to implement. So for that purpose, understanding the problem and giving the problem statement itself a big challenge. So how we are going to achieve that or how we are going to uh, create our problem statement. So for that purpose here, uh, several questions has been provided. So with using those questionnaires, we can drive our problem statement. So basically when we are uh, designing the problem statement, the first thing we should have in the problem statement is what is the our current state of the system or the product means where we are standing now. So uh, whether this is a new idea or we are going to solve an existing problem uh, in the product. So that needs to be addressed first. And then why we are going to design this, that needs to be addressed. Again, then what are our expectations with this? Means what we are going to achieve, or we can say that what are the goals or what are the uh, end outcomes we are looking with this statement that should be mentioned here. Uh, not like as a solution or as a feature, but as a as uh, we can say that means how we are going to uh, implement that problem statement to achieve that goal. And third, what are the metrics we are going to uh, check after implementing? So it could be a behavioral metrics or the customer behavior or what are the things we want to check? So what are the things we need to uh, look out when we are defining the problem statement. So 
uh, the first thing is that don't specify the solution means uh, it is very hard uh, to give a problem statement. Always we see that uh, we get the requirements or the solutions what we are looking. So here in Lean Unix, we are again telling the same thing that uh, the problems should be given to the team to solve uh, not the solution to implement. So just provide them the problem statement or the actual problem or the reason for which we are looking. And the second thing is, it should be at a right level, it means what the team should address or what kind of team's capability, that kind of problem statement should be given to the teams. It is not like that uh, we are giving a very high level of uh, a scenario to the team to resolve and the team is not having those capabilities to resolve the solutions. As we have uh, different hierarchies in the teams and we have uh, different teams working on a project. So it should be, uh, the problem statement should be addressing to that particular team and they should be uh, capable enough to solve that problem. So it should not like that means uh, if we are giving a very high level of problem and the team is getting frustrated and they are not able to uh, fix that uh, problem statement. So our statement should be based upon their level. And again, uh, it should be specific it means the things which we want to address or the problem which we want to address, it should be specific. It should be specifying what is uh, in scope of it and what is out of scope of that uh, problem. So that should be addressed. So these are the criteria or the questions we should look when we are uh, designing our problem statement. So again, uh, here uh, author gives us a note that uh, in problem statement, we should involve the stakeholders. Basically the problem statement is ultimately the project charter that needs to be coming from the stakeholders or the clients and we should get their commitment on this so that at later stage, it should not be like that means we have worked on a different problem and the expectations were something different. So here we should in the problem statement uh, designing, we should involve our stakeholders so that it should be rightly addressed. And again, uh, the author says that means if we find uh, during our uh, course of time or during implementation that uh, if we have uh, not aligned to the problems or we identify some uh, uh, wrongdoings in that, so we should come again to this and we should correct our approach over there. Means we should uh, make our shift on the right approach. So that is again a possible thing and and we, with that, we can achieve our, our desired goals. So here, uh, we have given an example of a problem statement, uh, which is given in the book. So in this, the author code, all those questions which we have seen in the previous slide, where uh, first uh, it is describing where we are standing, what is the current uh, problem company is facing, and what is being expected or what might we can design to solve the customer issues. So basically here, the example is given of a, a, a banking company where they have some uh, digital pod, uh, products, which was they launched initially. And now the other companies also improve their digital uh, lendings and they are competing with the company and that is the real problem with the organization that they are facing problems in acquisition the customers and the cost is getting high and the market share is uh, stagnant and the customers support costs rises so this is the actual problem statement and there the company is standing now and wanted to solve this problem statement so for this what is been expected of what can be the redesign approach that should be implemented to solve this problem with modern business approach and driving the customer acquisition back and reducing the prices and increasing the market share. So this is a best example which uh, author shared here. And uh, in the book author shared a couple of uh, other templates uh, which 
uh, we can use for our projects, whether it is uh, a new project or if we are working on a, a sustainable uh, innovation. So that author shared in the book. Uh, that's all from my end. So if we have any questions, we can yeah. take them. Wonderful presentation, Atta, I must say. Thank you. Yes, wonderful presentation and very important concepts. Uh, those have been discussed just now. Yep. Very important concepts. Those have been discussed now. Because uh, I feel that, okay, before we proceed with Asad, uh, we should discuss on uh, on the points what Atta has presented. Okay. The reason being is we have only now 23 minutes remaining. So that's the reason I'm feeling. Shall we discuss first the pro, uh, the the questions and the different concepts, which has been shared over here? Or let us finish. Uh... Sir, actually, I uh, this I, uh, box is that this is the box one. So second of the lean canvas is the box two. That is chapter six. Yeah, so let us maybe finish. Maybe we can that... do a collaborative discussion of of the combined both both of our. You correct. Know, correct. Correct. Yeah, that will make because both sense. are linked. Both are linked, actually. Sure. My and his chapter. Sure, I said. Then please so proceed further. We'll be able to finish it in another fifteen twenty minutes, and then we can have some five ten five seven minutes discussion before we end the. So will it be comfortable if I share now or yeah, later yeah. after the discussion? Please go ahead, I said. I have made. Uh, let me make you co-host. Please okay, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. As we are, as we everyone telling that, okay, we'll discuss at the end. Perfectly fine. Yes. Over to you, Asad. Just, I'm just uh, sharing the uh, screen. Sir, is, is it audio, uh, visible, the screen? Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, Asad. Now? Hello? Yes, now it is visible, yes. So today I would like to present my uh, pre uh, uh, presentation on the uh, chapter number six, that is your business outcome. That is the box two of the Lean UX canvas. So in this, basically, this is linked to the previous chapters that we have studied in chapter number three. Uh, specifically, if after uh, preparing the business problem statement. Next, in this, we will carefully analyze that business problem statement and make sure the design and the development team prepare the software or the product in such a way that it is ensuring to meet the customer's demands and needs. So we have to make sure that these designs that we have prepared, the mock designs in the previous uh, chapter that uh, was discussed in the last uh, on last Sunday by Deepti Madam about collaborative design. So we have to show in this that how these collaborative designs, how this will impact our, you know, revenues and, you know, help us in monetizing the product and uh, in this so we are analyzing the user journey so in this there are three types of user journeys that we are going to study about first is a pirate matrix which is also known as the funneling system and the second one is your <coughs> matrix mountain and third is your service space or a generalized one which is a hybrid of the previous two or can be a made up one so that is a bit advanced one so the first one that I would go with is, is the pirate matrix. So in pirate matrix, uh, this in this we are going to study uh, about the user, uh, user journey. So <coughs> we are going to study about the leading indicators. So leading indicators basically uh, the matrix basically which help us in you know pushing the product forward towards the customers that will help us in generating the revenue. So consider like a simple. Uh, uh, basically a behavior we are doing a behavioral analysis of how the user is interacting with the specific features of the product so based on those actions we can determine which of those actions will provide us 
the uh, guaranteed results or the uh, income or any type of result basically uh, conversion rate of the uh, uh, users into uh, trustworthy and committed customers <clears throat> so next uh, this yes so basically this is the funneling system that is the matrix mountain uh, sorry the pirate matrix in this uh, I, I just uh, draw one minute So over here, if you notice this aspect, here we suppose we are going to get our our hundred people for like this hundred percent of the people would reach our home page. Or suppose this is a website I'm taking as an example. So there are mainly five phases when it comes to you know a user journey. One is your activation phase. Oh uh, sorry, your first one is the acquisition phase. Second one is your activation phase. Third the retention. Fourth revenue. And the fifth is the referral. Well one by one I'll explain. The first acquisition is basically. How the product has reached the users. So we have like we have decided the audience, the target audience that is our 500 to 100, 100 to 500 people. So we have reached them. Next would be our activation phase. Once all the customers, you know, uh, have uh, once all the users have started, you know, interacting with the website. What are those specific features or what are those new things that are happening on our website? So new registrations we are getting, uh, new licensing. Uh, <coughs> Uh, per pass we are providing new licenses we are providing for that particular software and uh, they are signing up and they're making those purchases so these metrics are to be noted down in the first initial phase that is your activation phase after the acquisition phase next would be the retention phase in the retention phase we will be closely analyzing the actions that is retaining the user on our website so basically uh, it could be anything for example we have a uh, uh, for example if we take netflix for example netflix has uh <clears throat> that web uh, film series and you know various pictures and uh, different different you know things on their uh, uh, <clears throat> platform so this is keeping the user engaged so here we will uh, or notice a drop down so this would be around 80% drop down why because obviously the first 100 people to enter not obviously all of them would start you know immediately using them so will it will reduce by uh, 20% that will it, it will drop down to 80% next in the revenue model after the retention phase after the users have been hello I'm audible yes Ada. yes yes you are yes, okay. You're so uh, in this revenue uh, revenue phase the customers who have been retained okay so basically the ones who have you know actually engaged with our material you have who have viewed the content of the product who have started using the product and they have you know felt satisfied and they feel like you know they could you know <clears throat> maybe implement into their uh, daily life or working routine or system so they would further purchase more uh, more access to use that uh, particular software so in this this revenue system that would be so they would purchase a specific license so this is the retention phase would mostly be this phase that would be only you know a trial version or a say, uh, say for a short duration period the revenues place is where we want to lock in our customer so once they are locked in they would be around 60 percent only it would be around 20 percent reduction again next final would be our referral system basically this part this is i would say our top 30 percent i would say so these people are our long term customers who will be you know staying on our platform for a long period of time so this is our cream de la cream so these people I, what i'm trying to say is basically for a longer duration along a longer period of time these people would be the ones who would stay in the uh, for longer duration and would you know be committed to us so basically what happens is that we are filtering at each stage from a, a group of 100 to 500 people we are reducing it to a mere 30 50 people in the last phase where you know they're actually buying and they're using the product for a longer duration so we all know pareto's principle which states that 80 20 rule so 20 percent of the factors will determine 80 percent of the result uh, actually this is not mentioned in the book this is my uh, overview analysis of what i've done so this top 20 percent over here the last phase order and the confirmed aspect these will determine the 80 percent revenue of this factor this 80 percent so I hope uh, this aspect everybody understood what I'm trying to say. Yes, Asan, yes, you are yes. So these 20% people, 
will help us in generating a profit of a remaining 80 percent so we are diluting at each stage they are getting diluted from 500 100 to 500 people you have reduced them and whatever the remaining people that are left who are on our platform for a longer duration they would be you know our key customers and whatever new features we'll be implementing in the future will be based upon the feedback of those top 20 30 percent people only the remaining will follow as well so if you satisfy the needs of only the top 20 30 percent people automatically the needs of the you know new users will be met as well and also uh, we have to keep them retained for a longer duration as they are the main loyal customers of our platform so they would also refer these other people through word of mouth through maybe you know a social media platform or uh, some other ways as well so this is a pirate matrix model that is i have explained and next user journey would be metrics mountain in metrics mountain the five phases that i had mentioned earlier acquisition activation re uh, retention revenue and referral so this is simulated in the form of a mountain now this is a bit different from your funneling system in metrics mountain model at each phase at each phase the people are you know like uh, it's simulated as a mountain so at every plan when we are climbing there's a lot of effort that is required to go from one level to the second level and second level to the third level so some people not everybody you know if suppose a group of maybe say a 500 people you know start climbing the mountain not all of them you know would reach the top only 10 20 of them would reach the top so they are going to stop at every stage they're going to hike and they're going to set up camps at every stage so basically what is this saying is after you know in the activation phase we are getting you know first 500 people so in uh, going to the next stage again similar rule 100 then 80 percent first 100 100 percent over here it will reduce only to a mere 20 percent in the topmost phase but the only difference is that each phase each each phase we are retaining the users at that stage so it has been observed that every phase the users are stuck at that particular uh, place so we have to identify what is that you know burden or hurdle that is you know due to which they are unable to traverse to the next phase so those points we have to keep in mind for every stage each and every stage so that is your activation acquisition retention revenue and referral mode so in this at each stage as i mentioned the climb is getting harder that means there is some difficulty the users are facing you know in order to go to the next stage of that particular process for example if they have landed on the home page of that particular uh, software and next they want to you know start interacting with the software now they're having difficulties interacting with the software they didn't understand so they leave immediately so that 100 percent will reduce to 80 percent next the users who are there who are present who are interacting with the website they have you know not met their need what they actually wanted again some of them will leave then that would be reduced to 60 percent those 60 percent people would you know try and <clears throat> notice that okay this is somewhat beneficial to me they will stay and they would try and and some of them would try and decide that okay i think i need to pay for more features and they would go for a subscription based model or a license based model and they'll purchase the software that would be the remaining 40 percent and the next <clears throat> or i say the top 30 or 20 percent would actually stay uh, would purchase a lifetime membership or you know stay for a longer duration not only monthly basis or trial basis so these are the ones who would purchase the entire uh, software the system so this is the uh, metrics mountain system so in each phase there is a difficulty faced by the users due to which they are unable to proceed to the next phase so we are going to note those in this so how is it different from the funneling system in funneling systems users are not maintained at each and, each and every level they are eventually either going to pass through uh, through the bottom or going to go away anyway but in metric mountain the user are going to stay at each and every stage <clears throat> so this is the main thing to be noted here because at each and every stage uh, people are being retained uh, next up would be the third thing that is your one minute one minute. the third thing would be our service journey and user story map so basically this is now generally these two are the uh, standard ones now thirdly there might be a case where suppose we don't uh, these these two models are not fitting up you know the funneling matrix mountain uh, the funneling system that is your pirate matrix or the matrix mountain so we are going to implement our own system either we are going to combine both of them a hybrid system or create our own 
मेट्रिक सिस्टम बेस्ड अपॉन द टाइप ऑफ प्रोडक्ट और सॉफ्टवेयर वी आर यूजिंग सो इनिशियली इफ यू ऑब्जर्व फनलिंग सिस्टम इज मोस्टली यूज इन प्लेसिज वेर यू वॉन्ट डायरेक्ट मॉनिटाइजेशन विच इज कॉमनली नोन एज द सेल्स फनलिंग एंड इन मेट्रिक्स माउंटेन इट कैन बी यूज फॉर प्रायोरटाइजिंग द फीचर्स दैट वी वॉन्ट टू इम्प्लीमेंट नेक्स्ट सो हियर आर सम एग्जाम्पल हियर इज वन एग्जाम्पल दैट आई हैव एक्सप्लेन ओवर हियर Uh, example of the acquisition is what is happening is that uh, visitors are clicking on the landing page that is the first impression that we are creating conversion rate percentage of vit- visitors who will be signing up next would be the activation phase the sign up is complete so the users have come they have registered their account and they stayed on the website next would be re- retention they would start exploring the website and they would start uh, using the core features and who are also going to re- return back after some period of time so next would be the uh, re- referral system so at each and every stage if you notice there is a reduction going on in the referral phase only few would stay and would actually you know start sharing the same platform with others as well and next would be the revenue so those people who have stayed for the longer duration they would be purchasing you know more extra additional features or they would go for uh, the entire license or a lifetime access lifetime access as well so these people would be the ones who would pay for the, our main service uh this is the third page of the chapter number 6 and next up is outcome versus outcome impact out sorry output metrics versus impact metrics in this what is basically it is saying that outcome metrics so outcome metrics are those things that the user is actually doing and some something is happening basically a user has come on our page and he has registered so the outcome that has happened is you know increased number of registration number of login uh, have increased and uh, number of uh, maybe the re- uh, site visits have increased suppose for example in the first two weeks a thousand plus users have Uh, visit the website next would be the business decision that are taking place so actually in the book if you observe uh, there just a minute uh, in the yeah in the book they have uh, explained in a very you know complex way i have only used a single user flow what exactly is happening over here on the top right corner if you can notice so user action uh, inter- a user is interacting with a particular feature on the website and that is directly creating some impact some or the impact in the in other way <laughs> means basically what i'm trying to say is here if you observe this is something called as a butterfly effect now you must all know the butterfly effect uh, so what if i if those who don't know i'll just say again butterfly effect is that suppose if a butterfly flaps its wings in some other region it is creating a tornado hurricane or a cyclone in some other region which is very far away so similarly just because of one small actions that are occurring initially at the start phase <clears throat> the end result will also be impacted that is our ultimate revenue or monetization or growth or even the customer satisfaction so in the previous slides which i had uh, that i had mentioned over here this place this 20% that i had mentioned in the last place oh, uh, sorry i'll just erase it a bit yeah so this if suppose if you are starting with a Group, say there are two softwares a and b software a software has 100 users initially and software b has 500 users initially so obviously in the long run software the chances of software b succeeding far ahead would be much greater than software a only because of the reason it had a, a larger reach so this is a butterfly effect so just because of you know having a large uh, initial reach we are getting we have diluted them to a mere number Who, uh, which would be again a greater number so the 20% would also be a greater number so yeah basically this is what it says this particular chapter and this is done in a brainstorming session so, so one user action might even lead to some you know different user uh, with some different business decision or maybe a business decision may be related to two different user actions even this could be the case so this is usually created in a branching fashion a uh, tree based manner uh done by you know uh, all the teams are sitting together basically in this phase the business team the design team the engineering team they are all going to you know sit down brainstorm whatever you know observation they have uh, witnessed in the past coming uh, past week since the launch or since the 
uh, initial uh, deployment phase so these are the key points that they will note down and also whatever actions is being noted and what outcome it is creating through the business decision so this is the impact and uh, outcome matrix versus impact matrix uh, next up would be our uh, identifying only the valid outcome matrix so this is page, this is basically the page number 7 so in page number 7 it states that not every uh, outcome metric will lead to an impact metric there is something in this what it is saying is that there is something called as vanity metric so vanity metrics are those metrics which are not of any use to us or are not directly creating any uh, revenue or not actually affecting the entire business outcome structure of our uh, <clears throat> product that we have within our place so for example now here they have explained uh, of a journal retail conglomerate so in this day they are saying that suppose the pro there are certain products that are shelved or they are in stock but you know they are shelved so since they are not you know they are not in movement they are not either going back to the main uh, factory base or they are not going to the user they are stagnant so these are stagnant in nature so anything that is stagnant will obviously it is an imp every input metric will lead to an output but not necessary every input will result in an out outcome in a valid outcome just for example i mentioned the shelved products they are obviously not creating any uh, are of not any use since they are shelved they are not in motion so they won't you know result in direct revenue or any, affecting anything in general so there are many more things that could uh, be noted down during the brainstorming session you know that are not creating any impact to the business model so these have to be neglected because these uh have to be neglected to the reason being is because they might you know affect the thinking on our core focus as i mentioned in the matrix mountain uh, at each phase if you notice there is a difficulty that is occurring due to which the user cannot access to the next stage or is not retaining for a longer period so we have to note those only metrics why because those metrics are the ones that will drive the product forward when implementing the new features so finally leading to the page 8 as i mentioned previously that there are vanity metrics vanity metrics as in those not impacting the business of the product at all so this page number 8 talks about leading indicators that is the indicators that will you know be uh, of more priority when implementing features so these would actually drive the product forward growth product growth uh, we, uh, there's a term which we use product led growth so these leading indicators uh, indicators lead in this product growth and they also ultimately lead to customer satisfaction now example time over uh, example i have used over here uh, is of uh, yeah, this is the weeks okay the weeks and this is the time scale on the particular place so if you notice over a time period the it is getting reduced it is getting reduced so example is a hypothetical time spent on a particular feature over reading period of time time to uh, maybe complete a task number of you know time taken for a sign up so these initial phases these small small things need to be you know kept in mind as they are you know they should not be a turn off for the people who you know get carried away easily so that you know they might not feel any hassle or any issues while uh, using a particular product of ours so these would be the leading indicators and we are going to also something called as a and b testing we are going to carry if suppose there are two features that we are going to implement both are of same nature either it could be suppose for example the design of the login page we have a design a and a design b so test a and test b obviously we don't know which is you know going to be a of better performance to us so we are going to test out both of them a and b together through different you know users and we are going to check we are going to analyze which uh, which of those which particular a uh, sorry which one a or b is going to create the most impact we are going to segregate that and eliminate the other one based on the leading indicator so leading indicators plays an important role in a and b testing as well and next would be the recap finally so basically what we have discussed is initially focusing on the outcomes and not the only the outputs not because not every input will lead to a necessary outcome every input has an output but not an necessary outcome secondly identifying the leading indicator leading indicators can be identified with the help of you know matrix mountain or a pirate matrix system whichever seems or deems fit at that particular as, uh, aspect of our product or that moment of time and secondly connection between user behavior and business success 
so whatever our user is interacting on the site whatever he is doing is obviously going to by some or the other means going to impact our business that is the monetization so just because of few clicks here and there or some you know transaction made by only one singular person can affect our you know choices our business choices are feature prioritization choices as well so these have to be kept in mind user behavior the thing that i mentioned earlier the butterfly effect small small things you know can create big impact similarly the pareto principle can be analyzed for the success metric the top 20 30% of our people who have stayed on the you know have given their long term commitment have to be given the most priority because these will help us in driving the product forward and not necessarily and if we meet these uh, needs and criteria of these top 30 20% people they automatically will uh, the remaining 80% will follow as well so this is a kind of a psychology thing that will work around this so uh, thank you and this is the end of this particular chapter eight pages in total that's great superb superb uh, presentation asad yes, i really i really liked it a lot okay and it was having so much insights that okay it, uh, i was i was able to correlate what are the things happening in at my side with the concept what you are sharing each and every uh, concept is very much useful and uh, i know before you start whatever you are going to <laughs> start it is going to take huge amount of time okay so that's sure, the reason at the beginning i was thinking let's put you in the in, in the next week okay <laughs> because those concepts are very thick a lot to learn from from them a lot to learn right, sir, right, right. and we won't be able to learn those concepts if we don't discuss correct correct, correct. actually one full hour, one full hour of discussion is not sufficient on those concepts right 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 yes actually even if the, those small things that i mentioned a and b testing then your uh, butterfly effect you know that is also like i could have explained in more detail but to yes. be specific with this chapter i cut it short for that yep, particular yep. aspect only yep yep i know i know i know that's great so i think we are already 5 minutes over right dear friends yes and i am thinking just uh, i need uh, dipti shamshir everyone's uh, inputs uh, shall we have the discussion next time yeah i think already... that would be better yeah right. instead of moving good. forward again yes uh, in uh, in the other sequential chapters i think this both this today's uh, chapters were very much in deep every bullet uh, there it's like a it itself is a topic yep 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 so we always believe in outcome getting the results of this book reading club right and if we proceed without understanding these concept whatever they have told it is going to be very superficial uh, superficial it's just ticking up the box right so in the next in the next week shall we discuss the concept uh, what they have discussed we will take That's first right. atas okay in sequence then we'll go uh, for asad is that yes. fine Ata and uh, Asad, will you be present, please, next week as well? Yes, yes, I am always present, sir. <laughs> Great. Yes, sir, I will be there. Great. This is what I want to say. Yes. Okay. So uh, just are... a question, yes. like, uh, I exp like, was there any doubt or any uh, query? Means last, I had actually. We will continue. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> lot, lot of questions L for is... ourselves also to discuss actually, and uh, have have everyone in the journey in the in this learning journey. Sure, sure, ma'am. Sure. Yes, very you much. You can so. call me Dipti. What do you do, by the way? Atta and Asa. I I am a student. I am final year engineering student. So uh, I have wow. last few months actually remaining to graduate. Wow, that's great. That's great, Asad. Amazing, and I'm sure this learning journey will go long, long, long ahead yes. in your career. It is going to help it's you a lot good. for sure because these concepts I haven't heard, I have not heard from the senior people, and Correct. they are finding it difficult. They are struggling it with this concept to implement, and you presented in a, in a very nice way. And at at this stage, if you are part of this kind of a group. uh i'm sure you are standing out in your in your ground in your uh, 
uh, in your uh, friends Adiyar. group yes yes i'm uh, hopefully means i'm yes i'm actually expecting you know to make a career in this uh, pro- pro- product aspect only product management and related field yeah so that's, that's, that's where the whole world is it. moving okay thanks thanks And how about that? Yeah, uh, I do have total thirteen years of uh, IT experience, and currently yeah. I'm working with Deutsche as a AVP. Basically, uh, I'm mm, from pure technical background means uh, I'm part of uh, a Which database. Which technology? Database. Okay. Mm-hmm. Backend. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, good. A- a- AVP. What? Uh, Deutsche Bank for Deutsche Bank. Ah uh, yeah. uh you might know Am- anupam thul uh no actually uh, i joined deutsche uh, one year back only so oh, okay, one okay, year okay. no he is actually vice president of deutsche bank mm. yeah there might be multiple vps uh, mm. asad so that is the reason he might not be no known. but uh, deutsche bank and most of the banks i think uh, once you are little senior with 5 years everyone is avp ah uh, yeah <laughs> okay. yeah so with the vice president in other organization that's not true for the banks avp is uh, avp and vp are the very common and many people are there it's not like a vertical head or something they all are avp and vp hierarchy is little different opposite director is a senior position compared to vp in deutsche bank particularly okay good good i think this forum is is shaping well and let's continue with both these chapters in next sunday session for more discussion yes that's correct that's, okay. that's correct okay thank you thanks okay. so uh, thank you very much